<laughs> Get off my lawn, you kids! I want to show you something. You know, there was a time on this television show when I looked like this. <laughs> yeah. The year was 2005, and I was young. And I felt like a badass because I was telling older, terrible motorists that they should change their ways on the road. Times have really changed, though. This year, I'm the oldest person on this television program. I got more years on me than any driver here. I don't understand them. They don't understand me. Especially the cell phone stuff. What is this? I have to text and drive. No, you don't understand. I have to stay in touch with all my friends and tell them what I had for lunch. Here's a picture of a sandwich. <sighs> Some things haven't changed, though. We're still teaching these terrible motorists how to drive safely, and then we're testing them on it. And at the end of our series, one of those people will be named... Oh, oh my back. Canada's worst driver. All drivers know that when you're going in a straight line, your rear wheels follow your front wheels exactly, which is evidenced by these two tire tracks. What bad drivers don't know is that when you're going around a turn, your rear wheels do not follow your front wheels exactly, which is evidenced by these four tire tracks. See what I'm talking about? The next challenge for Canada's worst drivers is an annual Know Where Your Wheels Are course that we call the Trough. To pass the Trough Challenge, drivers must take this 2001 Suzuki Viterra around this snaking course made of concrete barriers without falling off. Will the remaining six Canada's worst driver nominees fall off the Trough? We're about to find out. Starting with Tyler, a habitual drunk driver. Does Tyler know where his wheels are? He would if he said his mirrors. On the very first turn, Tyler doesn't go wide enough. Oh, come on! And his rear wheel pops off. You did exactly what we talked about, so hop out and take a look. We talked about this yesterday with all the Canada's Worst Driver nominees in attendance. Your rear wheels follow your front wheels, correct? Yeah. No, they don't. And that's the thing that bad drivers often don't realize and don't understand. You see that disc, everyone? So watch. How? I'm right on the disc, yes? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Now, if my rear wheels followed my front wheels, my rear wheels would end up on that disc, correct? Thank you. They don't come anywhere close. Watch. Watch, watch, watch. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So the point of this little lesson is to know and really understand that your front wheels don't lead your rear wheels along the same path. They lead them somewhere else. And your rear wheels on a turn will always take the turn sharper. Exactly what we were talking about in the lesson happened. You got your front wheels around the turn, no problem. Yeah, but I wasn't focusing on the back wheels. And the back wheels take the turn sharper, right? What's the number one way to know exactly where your rear wheels are? Exactly. Exactly? Yeah. Um... Tyler did not adjust his mirror before starting the challenge. That's Philippe Letourneau, our high-speed driving instructor here at the rehab center. Beside him is our therapist, Shamala Kiru, and our head driving instructor, Tim Danter. Cam Woolley rounds out the team as our legal expert. Together, this panel not only helps me decide who graduates each week, they help me decide who will ultimately be named Canada's worst driver. We do this trough every year, and actually from looking at it, this is probably the easiest version of the trough we've ever done. I'm going to say, adjust your mirrors too, Tyler. Down, down, down. There we go before every challenge from now on. 
One more thing we're going to say every single challenge is... Don't give up. Is... No more drinking and driving. Because? Because I got lots to lose and I don't want to do it no more. Yeah. Tyler is so casual about his drinking and driving that when he sat down yesterday with our therapist Shamala, he didn't realize it's all she would want to talk about. So what do you think I want to talk to you about today? The weather. Yeah, that and... What? Give me a clue. What do you think gets in the way of you driving safely, Tyler? Stress. And what do you do to manage your stress? What do you want me to say? My hope is that by the end of the show, you can commit to, to no longer driving under the influence. I got a lot of stress, you know, a lot of responsibility. And sometimes, you know, <laughs> it's not funny, but I, you know, like to drink and, you know, and, you know, just relax, you know. And to me, that's my comfort zone. Jenna, what do you think? Jenna? Tyler's wife and the mother of his child recently left Tyler for a four-month stint due to the drinking and driving issue. I'm fighting for our family and I'm watching him make super poor decisions. So if you leave rehab and Tyler continues to drive under the influence. That's it. You'll leave? Absolutely. For and good? I told him and I'm never coming back. Can you make that commitment? I can make that commitment, pick my choices wisely, you know, and say no, you know. I can, you know, just so, you know, I can come home to my wife and kid, you know, knowing I'm sober, you know, knowing that she doesn't see me as a drunk, you know. On the trough course. Well, there's wide and there's too wide. Sober Tyler missed the turn with his front wheel. I'm off the course. Tyler? is trying to get back on track. I don't think that's going to help anything. What is that old familiar smell? Okay, I give up. Super distracted Diana begins by drawing success symbols. Success. On her windshield. All right, oh, oh, oh. But apparently they aren't working. Oh, oh not too much, girl. Oh, oh. Diana's brother-in-law, Jody, nominated her as Canada's worst driver due to the number of distractions she brings into the car. Hey, off the side. Can you share with me that all the items that you do bring with you in the car? Um, usually I have the Bible and the Quran, and I always have oracle cards for guidance. I usually have window writers, crayons, I'm an artist as well. I'm curious about the impact on your ability to focus. Now that I've thrown the distractions out, the driving should be a lot easier. So where are they now when you're driving? Uh, they're gonna be in the back seat. Back on the trough course. Undistracted Diana succeeds on her second attempt. Success symbol. Mike has a permanent brain injury due to a head-on collision that he suffered on the highway. I think you're over on my way too much. That crash was caused by another driver who fell asleep at the wheel. Thank you so much. Yeah. What are some of the sort of long-term challenges of the traumatic brain injury? Do you know any more than I don't? He doesn't quite respond to... Christian is Mike's wife. Unexpected situations, I guess you could say. You are doing awesome. He's not, actually. Mike fails both attempts. I guess I don't know where my tires are. When we come back, the rest of Canada's worst drivers run our trough course. I did it! No!
Canada's worst drivers are trying to stay on our annual trough course. I'm off the course. Before texting and driving addict Crystal goes, she says she has to check her snapper. You gotta check your which? Snapchat. Uh, let's learn to drive instead. I'm ready. Here's Crystal. Does she know where her wheels are? No, this isn't my car. That's why. Oh, Axel. Crystal's brother, Stephen, knows that she gets a flat tire about once a month. This is the tire that always busts on me. What do you mean busts? Hits, brakes, this is the tire. What do you hit? Everything. Like? Curbs, posts, parking stalls. Okay. I still don't get the disconnect why you hit so many things, yet you don't seem to actually care about the safety involved in that. I really don't. I'm I... getting there. Okay. My concern is that you will kill somebody. Yeah. I, I, I understand that that's your concern. But you're not concerned about it. No. I'm not going to lie. I'm not concerned about it. I'm not going to kill anybody. Like, I, won't, I don't think I would kill anybody. I'll look at my phone, and then I'll look at the road, and then I'll look at my phone, and then I'll look at the road. But it only takes two seconds for a kid to jump out, right? Like, as soon as I hear criticism, it's like my ears turn off. And, like, I let nothing in. The people that get the most out of this process, and there's tons you can get out of this process, are the people that actually open themselves up to change. I'm trying. On the trough course, Crystal is trying, but not succeeding. Oh, f I did it. I did it. No, I didn't do it. Failure means Crystal can get right back to Snapchat. Lou, who got her license just last year, begins by setting her mirrors. Yes. Okay, could Setting you adjust the that mirrors. one? Yes. Yes. Uh, take your hand You're away. the first person to set more. the mirrors before they left Lou. Really? First. Lou may have set her mirrors, but she's not skilled enough yet to use them properly. Oh. I don't think we're backing out of that one. Lou's husband, Derek, knows that she has serious anxiety when it comes to driving. So what do you think um, the solution is to reduce that anxiety? More driving. Yeah. Lou needs a lot more driving. <laughs> Lou fails. But she is learning. Oh, yeah. Learn that, yeah, your wheels behind you don't follow the wheels in front of you. Daniela has even more driving anxiety than Lou. Like, I don't know what, what I'm doing. We'll talk. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where the cement is on your side. Are you off the... I'm thing? off of it! Don't yell at me! I'm asking! Daniela's husband, her father, and her sister Chantal have spent a lot of their lives solving Daniela's problems for her. I can't see from this bottom I'm off angle. Of I'm off. I think the onus is now on you to start saying to the people that love you is to say, okay, I need to take responsibility for my own life. Yeah. And certainly for driving. I know. Are you prepared to tell people that you don't need their help, that you're prepared to drive on your own? Like, I want to be able to do that and, like, say, like, no, I can do it. Like, I do want to, but, like, I'm so used to having people do stuff for me. It's like, I don't know. Back on the trough course. <laughs> Easy. Daniela still can't take a wide turn. I think I went too wide. Daniela has a long way to go. I know that I will get there, though, but I'm just not there yet. When we come back, our distracted driving demonstration hits home. It's just 
me and my own thoughts and my own distractions that are getting in the way. Distracted driving is now the number one cause of crashes on Canadian roads. And no one out there is more distracted than Canada's worst driver nominee, Diana. I always have the path of God with me, whether through scriptures or oracle cards. Since this television show began 12 seasons ago, the biggest change in every driving culture in every single country on Earth has been the use of cell phones. I use mine all the time when I'm driving because I'm a good driver. Mm. According to Transport Canada, one in every 20 drivers on Canadian roads these days is speaking on their phone. I know that even hands-free devices take too much of your attention away, so I never use them. That's good. That's really good. But texting and driving is not. Don't even get me talking about texting and driving. Ah, come on. It's one little text. It's not going to hurt anybody. Selfie! Look. Four out of five crashes on Canadian roads these days are caused by distracted drivers. So, as a lesson to us all, it's time for our annual distracted driving demonstration. Would you stop doing that? Three Canada's worst driver nominees distract themselves behind the wheel. It's time now to see if we can convince them to stop doing that. So I'm just going to draw a couple symbols. This is to uh, forgive myself if I've done anything wrong. The level of distraction that she brings this year is probably the greatest that we've ever seen. Diana is right now driving our decommissioned cop car around and around our 400 meter long course, distraction free. There's no reason that you would ever have any form of an accident on this course. Heavens no. All right, let's introduce some of the distractions that you commonly drive with. All right. Because we have three promises, dear friends, we must cleanse ourselves from every... She can have her spirituality, that's fine, but she should not be bringing it into the car with her in this way. I'm going to open up the court, I don't know. In the name of Allah, <laughs> What's strange about her is she thinks that it's positive energy, so it is therefore good. But there's no such thing as a positive distraction. Even though she's had three serious crashes due to distracted driving, oh. Diana has no interest in learning this lesson. Lord, tell me what they need to know so I can get this done. Diana's telling me that since her last crash that was due to distractions, she now drives at manageable speeds. And he's trying to tell you is what you're doing on the road is dangerous. It should be done on any speed. Change is tough, and Diana just does not want to change. Please, Lord, God bless all the drivers. Ensure that they're safe and protected at all times. And Diana just hit her breaking point. talk about it. It's just, it's just a battle I've been facing and um, it's hard to, uh, to trust not only myself, but the world in general. And um, yeah, it just feels like maybe it's just me and I should be listening to everyone else's advice and conforming to what they all want. <laughs> I don't need you to conform to society's norms on 99% of the levels, but on the driving distracted, I absolutely need you to conform. Absolutely. Mike once crashed due to fumbling, smoking, is Mike's only driving distraction. So many people who come here have multiple distractions. You only have one and it's making you crash. Yes. 
smoking is bad in more ways than one. I'm learning, too, because some of the stuff I have a habit of doing myself, and mm -hmm. you never really think about it, you know, until it's pointed out. Mm. Yeah, until you're killed. Cell phone addict Crystal doesn't think distracted driving is her biggest issue. I think backing up is my biggest issue. Tell me what you do as a driver that causes distractions. Like, I don't think I have distractions. But you text and drive. Yeah. Have you been in accidents because of distracted driving? A couple. Text me. My phone number is 647. 647. 624. Oh, my god. I hate him already. And why would you hate me when you're the one controlling the vehicle? Because I would never try to go around corners like this and text and drive. When Crystal tries texting again, she loses control again. Why do I always hit something? Why does Crystal insist on sending texts while driving is the real question. How many of them are just single words that are pointless? Like probably a couple hundred. What? You send a couple of hundred single word texts every day? Yeah, I send meaningless texts all the time. While driving? Yes. Ugh. Now, what, what, why did you crash just now? Because I turned the wheel too wrong, because I don't know how to turn a wheel, not because I can't text and drive. We've never done this challenge and not had people actually grasp the point of it. I think my problem is that I take these turns too fast, not that I text and drive. This is where I would text. Oh, straight line. I think that I learned that I'm not that. One second, got to make this turn. Now I'll text again in a second. Are, are we just beating our head against the wall with you? Should we just give up? Did I hit anything going straight over there? No, because that's where I would send a message. Like, show me some footage that you catch me texting around a corner, because you won't. Let's now go to a little montage we call Crystal texting around corners. It's too hot for this. I think I go this way. Look at all the stuff you hit on the course. I wouldn't have texted around the corner. This morning. Crystal told Shamala she was trying to change. I'm trying. But now, all she's trying to do is justify her reckless behavior. Everybody texts and drives, and not just me. No, not everybody. Yes, everybody texts and drives. When we come back, is our annual Swerve and Devoid challenge. You ever kill a horse before? Never, I'm a vegetarian. Well, today you slaughtered a Mustang. I get into today. Let's just jump right to it, spin the big wheel, and find out. Will it be a T-bone? Will it be a head-on? Will it be a side swipe? Ooh, no, it's a suddenly appearing moose. Canada's worst drivers have no idea how to deal with something like a suddenly appearing moose. So they are going to be spending one beautiful afternoon with their high-speed driving instructor, Philippe Letourneau, who will teach them a driving technique called Swerve and Avoid. Ready for more training? Training, 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 training. Of course. Before the training begins. Hold on, guess what? I got a surprise for you. Crystal puts her cell phone in the glove box. Thank you very much. I'm ready. At 50K an hour, if you slam on your brakes when something appears suddenly and closely in front of you, you will skid into that something, as Philippe now demonstrates. Work, break. Okay. So you saw that I jumped on the brake, mm -hmm. but the car kept, kept going. Kept going. Turn. Which is why swerving 
is the only way to stay safe. We're driving, we're chatting, and all of a sudden something gets in front of me. <laughs> swerve, oh my God. stabilize, and then break. Oh. Okay. 50, look where I want to go, look where I want to go, look where I want to go, look where I want to go. When Lou tries swerving and avoiding... Let's go to gas. She drives right off the road. What happened? I don't know. When Tyler tries it, he simply understeers. And when Crystal tries swerving, she continues accelerating after Philippe tells her that her speed is good. Speed is good. Speed and then I jump to a break. Let go. No. Oh, Sorry. The first thing I said is, let's do this at 50. Yeah, how fast was I going? We were way over 60. I, I don't know how to fix that. That happens to me all the time. I'm just driving and then, like, my speed just gets faster and faster. Even at 30 kilometers an hour, Daniela can't swerve and avoid. I think I know what I did, though. I didn't go enough like that, right? So you did, like, minimal steering input. Yeah. It does take a while, but... Swerve hard. And brake. Oh, what a rush. <laughs> want to try again? Yes, sir. Of course I want to try again. Oh. Canada's worst drivers learn how to avoid an obstacle, then steer back to safety. And as always, the amount of steering required is determined by looking where you want to go. Oh, oh my God, I did it, I did it. Awesome. For the Swerve and Avoid Challenge, drivers will pilot our brand new Mustang at 70 kilometers an hour. When they reach here, a crash test obstacle will appear either here or here. The driver must then swerve to the safe side. Rookie driver Lou has not passed a single challenge in rehab. Can she swerve and avoid? Let's see. 70, 70, 70, 70, 70. Lou's actually going 80 when the obstacle pops out to her left. I target fixated. I target fixated. I know what I did. No! No, Lou! That is classic target fixation. Absolutely classic. I looked at the target. I looked at the target. Okay. I can't believe I looked at the target. Gotcha. Oh, my God. Let's do it one more time. Okay, thank you. For the love of all that is dark and evil. That's what you're into, right? <laughs> yeah. For the love of all that is dark and evil, Lou. Look for an opening and go there. <laughs> we'll try. Attempt number two. Here we go. Oh, yeah! Oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God! I did it! I did it! I did it! I did it! Oh, my God! I did it! Oh, oh, oh! Oh, my God! Oh, my God, I did it. Lou swerved and avoided. The first thing I passed. Oh, my God. I did it. So where does the success come from? Looking where you want to go. Exactly. Mike is up next. Target fixation kills people all the time in Canada. They see the post, even, and they run into it. Will Mike succeed? Let's see. Mike has faster reaction time than I've been giving him credit for. That was awesome. Daniela's brain cannot handle high speeds. Like, when I go fast, I almost, like, black out, almost. Like, I don't remember. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh. 60? 60, 70. I'm at 70! I'm at 70! Ah! Yoy, that is target fixation to beat the band. I even think that obstacle came out early. 
The target did indeed come out early. I'm not seven. And Daniela did indeed fixate on it. <laughs> proving once again where you look is where you go. Like, I don't know what happens. When I hit 70, I just start screaming, and, like, my whole body locks up, and, like, I don't know what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden, I start hitting stuff, and I'm so frustrated. When that thing popped out, where did you look? I don't even remember. Like, honestly, I think I was just, like, looking, like, at, like, nothing, like, at the world. You look right at it, okay? It's human nature to look at that thing that's moving. If I dangle something shiny here, you're going to look at it. Yeah. And if I dangle it over there, you're going to look yeah. at it. We'll set it up again, and we'll do it one more time. And where are you going to look when that thing pops out? But the other one, the other way, the clearing. The clearing? Yeah. If I don't get this, I just feel like it's gonna be like a huge, like, blow. Guess who's gonna save you this time, Daniela? Who's gonna swoop in to be your knight in shining armor just like your dad always does, or your sister always does, or your husband always does? You? <laughs> no, you! You're gonna save yourself! <laughs> okay. Nobody's gonna save you. You are! I'll try. Look at it. I'm not gonna look at it. Oh, you got the right side. You got the right side. That is huge. You know what would have been huger? Steering. You barely turned the wheel at all. You went basically I know, straight through because the Because I was going too fast. Come back. Oh my there are lip quivering man tears. This is scary. Canada's worst drivers are being challenged to swerve around a suddenly appearing obstacle at 70 kilometers an hour without hitting the brake. I target fixated. I target fixated. And Diana is doing this challenge without any distractions in the car. But while swerving to the opening, panics and hits the brake. Ah, uh, no, Diana. That's why you don't hit the brake in mid-swerve. Yeek. You swerved correctly. Mm -hmm. You didn't touch anything except the brake and that spun you wildly out of control and into the oncoming traffic. If you fail at this time, you're not gonna get to go home. This time, Diana unwittingly foreshadows her swerve by having her left blinker on. Nail it. Diana passes. Crystal knows that we use hand signals to communicate when it's safe to go. I'm gonna give you the big fat hand signal over my head, here it comes. And I'm gonna let you know that the coast is clear. Whoa, here you go, okay, you're going right away. That's not 70, that's not even close to 70. That's not even close to 70. That is not even close to 70. That is so not 70. To the naked eye, you can see that's not even close to 70. That's more like 100. Crystal has a terrifying habit of flooring the gas pedal to accelerate, then... 70. When she hits her desired speed, she just lets off a random amount of pressure. Oh, I don't know which way it's gonna pop up. I'm just gonna go! Oh, <laughs> oh my God. I just guessed. What was the last thing we talked about before you left? My speed? Yeah, yeah, your speed. I was going 70. No, <laughs> not even close. I looked at it, I was going 70. You were going 100. No, I wasn't. You were. No, I don't believe you. <laughs> what do you mean? I guess I looked at it for 70. <laughs> I can't do this. To know that you're going 70, you have to reference the speedometer. But I can't look down and then look back up. Yeah, you can, and that's one of the reasons why you're in rehab, is to learn how to do that. So this is what I do when I drive. When I'm driving, I push the gas. 
And then I watch it. 70. Okay, it's at 70. Then I could drive. And then all of a sudden, it keeps going. The Mustang isn't going at all now. It's broken. Crystal's collision knocked a computer chip loose. And now the car won't start. You ever kill a horse before? Never, I'm a vegetarian. Well, today you slaughtered a Mustang. Tyler's worst accident was caused by a suddenly appearing obstacle. Namely, a garbage truck that he slammed into. If you had known how to evade a suddenly appearing obstacle, you would have been able to avoid it. Is that correct? Oh, that's a definite. For the Swerve and Avoid Challenge, Tyler will drive the Crown Vic he learned the technique in. No speeding, ever. You, you, I'm talking to you. Don't be like Crystal, because when you speed, you can't control what happens. Let's see how Tyler does. Tyler does 50, then 60, 70, up to 83. Oh, oh my I don't know if you heard me when I said it before, but if you speed, you can't control what happens, Tyler. What the just happened? I don't know. I went to go move, and I just oh! I oh my like, god! Holy! Tyler! Oh. Tyler! It's going too fast. Panicked. You panicked, hey? I panicked. Straight up. So you're driving at 80, which is faster than we asked you to go. And then the thing pops out. And where do you look? I looked at the car, at the At the obstacle. At the obstacle. You steered toward it. And then you, the... you did have a Holy moment man. of clear thought, and you realized this is no good, and you tried to steer back. Yep. And you went straight through the middle of the wall. It's painful some days here at the rehab center, like desperately, deeply painful. These people, they want to learn so badly, but they just can't. Here's Tyler's second run. This time, Tyler's speed is correct, but when the obstacle pops out, he panics and slams on the brake, rendering his steering useless. So you don't want to tell these people that they shouldn't drive, but some of them... Some of them just shouldn't drive. What's the biggest lesson you've learned here? Look where I want to go. Tyler knows what to do. He just can't do it. This is scary. When we come back, the experts and I choose this episode's graduate. That's a horrible, horrible way to live. F you. F yourself. The experts and I will now decide who this episode's graduate will be. That is, assuming someone wants to graduate. I will one day want to graduate. I kid you not, I'll be happier than telling you guys, hey, I'm ready. But right now, I, I'm scared, you know, I'm still nervous behind the wheel. I, I don't want to graduate. I shouldn't graduate, no. Do you deserve to graduate this show? I do deserve to graduate on this show. So the distracted driving challenge that we did in this episode made you cry at the end. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> a little bit of humility and uh, failure goes a long way. I was in the wrong. I should never be distracted. I should never be reading while I'm driving. I shouldn't be texting, that's for sure I'm not going to be doing. You are done with that? Yeah, I'm totally done with that. 
Crystal also wants to graduate, but she says she's not done texting and driving. I'm not going to stand here and lie to you and say that I'm not going to text and drive. I am. Everybody texts and drives. Like, it's not just me. Am I going to do it much less? Yes. Am I going to be much more conscious of when and how I'm doing it? Absolutely. I think that's the biggest change I can make. I don't know if there's anything any of you can say to me that's going to make me think otherwise. Why so angry? You piss me off. I don't buy that for a second. What I'm wondering is actually why you're so angry. You, you literally no, make me No, it's not so... me, it's got nothing to do with me. Why such a You're playing the odds. And the way you're going, you're gonna win and it's not in a good way. I'm an unsafe driver, I'm reckless and I drive fast. And real driving bores me. Okay, and that takes me back to what I said to you on day one that I think only a horrible person would actually understand that they're reckless and then go out and endanger lives intentionally. When I told you you called me a horrible person, you actually said, no, no, I said your driving makes you a horrible person. It does. You just called me a horrible person. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I think anybody that goes out in public and intentionally drives you. recklessly is yourself. horrible. I'm done. You didn't suck my d Andrew. Wackadoo, wackadoo. That was kind of exciting, hey? That was yeah. intense. Yeah. That's a first. For me, anyway. It is. That's in 12 years of this, no one has ever stormed out of here. Okay, we're not here to uh, psychoanalyze the situation with Crystal. We're here to pick this episode's graduate. Who's it gonna be? I've been wrong about people on this show more than once. Okay, I just want to talk about that for a second. I have read people the wrong way. I have believed that some people who show up here are bad, or disrespectful, or even sociopathic. Only to learn that they actually do care, and with a little bit of effort, they're not only capable of driving well, they're capable of making the world a better place to be. I just want to admit now that I was incorrect about one person who is here this season. And I want to say that, Diana, I actually thought you were so flaky, you'd never be able to wrap your head around driving safely. But I was wrong. And I just want to tell you that this episode, the experts unanimously agreed that you should graduate. Get your license. Thank you. Angle. So congratulations for that. Before coming to rehab, Diana had multiple license suspensions, she'd written off five cars, and it was all due to the fact that she was the most distracted driver we have ever encountered. It's in the shape of a diamond, which is love, safety, and security. Well, she's gonna drive right there. In rehab, Diana learned basic driving skills. There's no left turns on this one. Wonderful from both of our experts. Your eyes will steer the car where it needs to go. But it was our constant message that her distractions had to go. Roll down your window and throw all of those cards out it. That ultimately changed Diana. My distractions, like my cards, my window writers, and my holy scriptures can be put in the back and I can drive on safely. I look forward to uh, seeing Diane out on the road, an undistracted, attentive driver. And you. Awesome. Distractions are in the back. Right on. Peace, Diana. Congratulations. If you know someone who drives distracted, tell them to stop. I'm not going to stop until one of these five people is named Canada's worst driver. On the next episode of Canada's Worst Driver. Mm. Mm. The nominees learn the dangers of going 10 and then 20 kilometers an hour over the speed limit. 
subjected to the longest reverse. Faces fly in our annual handbrake spin out challenge. I quit. Andrew Young Husband takes to the skies during his stint as a wing walker. Next, on an all new Tougher Than It Looks, Todd returns to the Klondike to collect his crucial wash plant, Monster Red. Tomorrow, on an all new 